Hello, I'm now going to talk about main memory, in particular looking at RAM, ROM and cache. So what is meant by main memory or even just the word memory generally? So main memory is what is directly accessible by the processor. So it's what the processor is able to access straight away. Main memory has got a direct connection to the processor. Something like storage, like a hard drive, like a USB memory stick, like a CD, is not directly connected to the CPU, to the processor. So what is our RAM, cache and ROM? So we're going to detail about these individually in just a few seconds, but I've put them in these positions for a reason because RAM and cache both share a property and ROM sort of has the opposite property. So this property is volatility. So RAM and cache are both volatile memory, whereas ROM is non-volatile. Volatile as a concept in IT means memory loses its contents when power is lost. Right, the purpose of memory is to hold data, but RAM and cache, because they are volatile, they lose that data when the power is switched off. Whereas ROM, which is non-volatile, keeps its contents even when the power is turned off. Same with storage. So the hard drive, the SSD, the memory stick are all non-volatile. They keep their contents when power is turned off. Okay, so RAM and cache are really important. In fact, so is ROM, I shouldn't say that. Um, but it's important you realize that these are what is connected to the CPU. Storage is not directly accessible. It's a separate bit of hardware. So first of all, RAM. RAM looks like this. This is a little bit of a fancy version of what I showed here. RAM, you have usually one or two sticks of RAM in your computer. And so RAM as an acronym stands for Random Access Memory. Now make sure you learn what that means. Um, I'll come back to why that's called that in a second. But RAM, its whole purpose is to hold data and instructions temporarily. It's temporary because it's volatile, right? It's not permanent because the second your computer gets turned off, you lose the contents. It's only temporary, it's only when it's on, and it's both data and instructions. Okay, going back to its name, random access memory, the random access bit might seem a bit odd, but it's because RAM has the property that no matter where on the stick of RAM your data or instruction is held, it will take the same amount of time to access it by the CPU. So right in the corner, right in the middle, right on the side, no matter where it is, it takes the same amount of time, roughly speaking, to access it. Something like a hard drive can vary quite a bit depending on where on the device it is. So RAM is quite consistent with how fast it is. Now, what is important you realize is RAM is used as a direct connection to the CPU. So when you open a program or file on your computer, as you do all the time, what is going on behind the scenes is it is being copied from the storage into RAM. Your programs and files are stored in storage because it won't get deleted, the second power is turned off, but to be used by the CPU, it must be copied into RAM. And so that's why things, are, things load, when you open them, they're loading from storage into RAM. And again, sort of just for your context, I suppose, as you might know, RAM is usually gigabytes in size, usually quite low gigabytes, right? Storage might be 500 gigabytes or a terabyte or two terabytes. RAM is smaller, so usually between four and 32 gigabytes in a standard computer. Could have more, could have less, but it's not as big as storage, generally speaking, because it's only for stuff which is open. You haven't got everything open at one time, so it doesn't need to be quite as big as storage. Okay, so RAM is our, our biggest example of memory, but ROM is very, very small, but very essential in the process. ROM stands for read only memory, and it's hard to get a good photo of ROM because it's a very, very small memory chip. RAM is quite distinctive and quite big. ROM is very, very small and bland looking, I suppose. So read only memory. That suggests that you can't write to it. So read only means you only view it, you can't change stuff on it. And that's important as a property. So ROM can't be easily changed. You can read stuff, but you can't write to it easily or even at all in some cases. 
So in the factory, they write stuff to RAM, and from then onwards, you can't really change it. So you won't be storing stuff in ROM because it can't store stuff in addition to what it's got already. So what it will hold are really, really essential programs. So the most essential stuff is held in ROM. Now an example is a bootstrapper. So a bootstrapper is a really, really simple program, which all it does is when the power is turned on on your computer, that program will tell the CPU to load the operating system from the storage into RAM. So the OS is stored in the storage because otherwise it would get lost if it was in RAM, but it's got to be put into RAM to be able to get used by the CPU. And so there's a program held in ROM, which loads it from storage into RAM. It's why in the first you know, few seconds of you turn your computer on, you often get kind of a black screen, usually with your motherboard um, company on it. And then you'll start to get your operating system load after maybe a couple of seconds. Okay, in those couple of seconds, the bootstrapper is loading the OS into RAM. Okay, so this loading screen is when the stuff in ROM is doing its job. Okay, and that's all it's used for. It's only used for that first few seconds when you turn on a computer. Without it, you would never be able to open anything because nothing would be in RAM at the start. Okay, so ROM is really simple, has a very, very small capacity, usually only a few megabytes, maybe even less in some cases. So it's only for very, very important programs. The third and final example of memory is cache. So cache exists in a few places in the computer, but mostly it's a little part of the CPU. So again, it's hard to get a picture of it because it's just a little part of your CPU, but it is some very, very small, but in particular, very fast memory. So cache is rapid, much faster than ROM or RAM. Now, what cache does is hold frequently accessed instructions and data. Because it is so quick and because it's so small, the computer prioritizes the most frequently used instructions and data, and they're held in cache. There's no point holding some program which never gets used, because why would you waste precious cache space on something which isn't really used? It's always stuff which is used really often. Now what's important to know is CPU cache, at least, is what is checked before RAM. So when the CPU is trying to use some data, it will first of all check cache before checking RAM. It will check cache first because cache is faster. And so to speed up things, it makes sense to check the faster version before the slower version. Of course, if the item isn't in cache, because cache is much, much smaller than RAM, it'll just have to check RAM afterwards. Okay, so TPU cache is checked first, and it is really small. So RAM might be, say, 16 gigabytes, cache might be five kilobytes, maybe, well, in most computers, it'll be about 16 megabytes, potentially, in the CPU, but that's much, much smaller than RAM. Okay, so it's really, really fast, but much smaller. If you've got more cache, that's a good thing. It will speed up your computer.